Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to today to this digital forum, um, number 27. Um, actually, I feel, I feel like we've done more forums than 27 um, in the digital format, but yeah, welcome to today. Um, thank you for being here. Um, just while everybody continues to join, um, I will do a few in introductions and a bit of housekeeping. We've got 140 participants with us at the moment and yeah, and rising. So um, yeah, some good numbers today. Um, my name is Natalie Bungay. As I said, I'll be your host today, keeping everybody in order and uh, in check. Um, I'll just be doing some, yes, I said, some introductions and also um, so managing a bit of Q&As when we get to that. Um, but yeah, thank you for being here today. I don't know what it's like there. I think from the looks of the chat section, it's pretty miserable around the most of the UK. As I did see we've got someone from Gibraltar joining us, and I'm going to assume it's probably a little bit nicer over there. Um, but yeah, we like to have a moan about the weather, don't we? What else would we do? Um, so yeah, welcome today. Thank you so much for being here. We have a packed agenda, lots of different subjects. Um, I just want to give a shout out to um, Killgerm today. They are our sponsors, really appreciate that. And they'll be um, giving us a, a talk later on. Avril Turner will be chatting to us later on and I'll go through the agenda in just a moment. Um, before we do, um, CPD normal. So it's three points that you're going to be getting today. Um, we'll be finishing about 12.30, so that's three hours, it's three points. And it's always good, actually, whenever you join events like this, is to have a think about how you can maybe get extra CPD points afterwards. Um, you know, some of the um, presenters today might be talking about a subject that is possibly new to you, or they might mention something that maybe we don't have time to go into a lot of detail about. Well, that's an opportunity for you to go and do some more research, be it online or giving them a call or giving us a call here at BBCA and, you know, looking into it a little bit more. And that's where you can get your extra CPD. Um, you just need to go and fill out um, a form. I said if it's BBCA registered or basis prompt and uh, yeah, tell us or them about it. So yeah, lots of opportunities for CPD coming to the end of the year now. So hopefully everybody on here, um, you're getting towards, if not already got your 20 points. I think I've got about 54, something like that. It's not a competition or anything, but um, yeah. So get those CPD recorded if you do do any more afterwards. Um, just a little bit. So chat section, a lot of you are already using the chat section just to say hi and where you're coming in from. That's great. It's always nice to know uh, the variety of um, of locations you're joining us from today. Um, but also if you have any technical issues, so if there's any sound issues or um, uh, uh, video issues, then just pop it in the chat section. Um, let us know. And my colleague Lauren is um, sort of sat there as a, a technical support just to give you some um, hints and tips of how you can maybe make it better. Generally, it's kind of turn it off, turn it on. Um, but yeah, it's um, I think everything at the moment, the good good chance now as well for this introduction for me is just to pick up on any any audio issues. So if there is any issue there, just let us know. But I think my Wi-Fi is pretty good today. Um, so that's a chat section. And as always, um, once the presenters have gone through their presentation, um, I'll pop back up with them. And yeah, we'll go through your questions. It's a Q&A button. So don't put it in the chat section. Um, don't put your questions in there because we're not necessarily going to see them. Um, if you want to ask a question to one of the presenters, then make sure you put it in the Q&A section, OK? And get them in there as, as early as you want to or at the end of the presentation, if you think of something. Um, because, yeah, we like to get interested. Active. We want to know what your thoughts are on things. Even if you want to share an experience, that's always good as well. Um, any questions that we don't manage to get to, you know, if we're running over on time, because we've all got, you know, you, you guys have got busy days and we want to get you away for 12.30. If we do miss any questions, um, don't worry. We will um, get those um, out to the speakers or they might be able to answer them after their presentation, just um, typing away um, directly to you. OK, so we will do our best with that. Um, just a, a, before I said, before I go through the agenda, just a quick shout out about a couple of events this year. So um, we've got a physical forum in Leeds. I'm in not so sunny Leeds. That's where I'm calling in from. And yeah, it's just down down the road. It's quite handy for me. Um, and that's on the 27th of November. So anybody on the call that's in a um, travelability radius to Leeds, yeah, please join us. Um, get registered 27th of November. It's all up there for you to have a look. Um, and then uh, 13th of November, I will be doing a webinar on, at the moment it's, it's called Rats in Flats. Um, 
because it rhymed, we liked it, but actually I'm going to change that a little bit to rats and mice in um, multi-occupied buildings. Um, it's not, that title is not as great, is it? So um, rats in flats sound good, but we're going to be covering um, rodents generally in um, buildings with multiple occupancy and the challenges that come along with that. So yeah, that's the 13th of November again, get registered for it. Um, and then, yeah, the final digital forum of the year will be 11th of December. So, yeah, all these events are great. Again, CPD is going to be due by the end of the year. Um, so um, any of you that want to join us at those events, that would be amazing. OK. Um, and one last shout out, PPC Live. So I can't believe that's come coming around already, but um, well, it's March, but that will be here quicker than we think. So the um, 19th of March at Yorkshire Event Centre in Harrogate. Um, so I know it's not not everybody's going to be able to get to it, but at the same time, you know, Yorkshire's a lovely place um, and the Yorkshire Event Centre is an even lovelier place. So if you can get to that um, PPC Live, lots of technical presentations and uh, hopefully the weather's good because we're going to be doing some outside demonstrations as well. So, yeah, get along to that, get registered. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll we'll see you there next year. Uh, one final thing, you, some of you might have noticed already, possibly um, when you, you joined this call today, you've been diverted to um, or there's a, an extra screen that's open to a charity called Trustle Trust. Um, that's our supported charity, a charity we support as BPCA. Um, we've got just over a thousand pounds in there. So, yeah, anybody here that um, wants to donate, um, it's all to do with food banks and, and helping those in need um, in, in difficult times. So um, if you can donate even just a, a few pounds to that, that'd be amazing. If everybody here donated, you know, five pounds, then, yeah, we'd be on a winner, wouldn't we? Um, so, yeah, that's all that is great if you can. OK, I think um, that's most of it. There's no fire alarms planned today. So, um, oh, no, I don't need to do that bit, do you? That's the physical stuff. Um, so, yeah, we'll just have a quick look at the agenda. Um, most of you should have already had it, had a, a little a little look. But as always, we like to have a variety. Um, just first up, just after I've done some um, quick introduction, we've got Richard Mosley from Syngenta. He's going to be talking about um, effective ant control strategies. So, you know, we can, well, some of you might already have problems with ants uh, at the moment. It's one of those with the temperature at the moment, it's a bit up and down, um, but certainly it's good for preparation next year, isn't it? Um, and then we've got Dave Archer talking about squirrels. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to be talking talking about just you know traps and how to do effective squirrel control I think there's going to be some you know um, obscure and different angles that Dave's going to be coming at so I think it's going to be new information and, and good information for everybody joining today um, we'll have a comfort break at 5 to 11 um, for 10 minutes just to go and grab a coffee I've already got my coffee way in here so I'm sure I'll need a top up by the uh, 5 to 11 um, and then after the break, we're going to have Avril Turner from Kill Germ Chemicals, our sponsor today. Um, and she's going to be talking about the interpretation and evidence in pest activity. You know, what, what, what it what it looks like for, you know, what it can mean and, and how important it is. Um, and then finally, after Avril, we've got John Horsley, who's BPCA, and he's going to be talking about the future of pest qualifications. Um, and then we finish off with a bit of association news and industry updates. Um, there's always bits going on here and there. So, yeah, please stay with us until the end. Um, lots going on, lots to learn. And, um, yeah, looking forward to getting 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 started. OK, I'm going to chat check the chat section just make sure we haven't got any technical issues. I can't see that we have. It's all looking good. Yeah, fabulous. Um, great. Right. Without further ado, uh, Richard, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Fabulous. Um, so you're going to talk to us uh, about ants today. I think I'm going to let you do your thing and uh, I'll pop back when you're when you're done and we do some Q&A's. OK. OK, brilliant. Great. Can I just check that you can see my screen? Uh, yep, absolutely. Perfectly. OK, fantastic. So uh, good morning, everybody. So my name is Richard Mosley from Syngenta and really pleased to be kicking off the meeting today. Uh, BPC have asked me to come and give a, a, a have a chat about um, ant control. Um, so that's why we've called it Conquering the Colony. Um, and as we run through, we'll just start with a bit of biology. But all of that biology is going to limp back to the colony itself and how using the right treatment in the, in the the effective treatment in the right way is going to give you the most efficient control and also the, the the very best chance of control as well i've got to say right now up in the northwest of england it doesn't um feel particularly like ant weather um but that's no reason why we can't crack on with this presentation i am aware that there are still some ant treatments going on in various areas 
And also, you know, there are there are non-native or non-normal species, let's say, that, that pest controls are coming across on a regular basis, um, if not here in Europe, that we should be aware of. Uh, and we'll touch on those a little bit later as well, just sort of think about what, what could be coming around the corner. So just moving on. There we go. Um, so I suppose most of us, if we're doing ant control on a reasonably regular basis, then the, the, the kind of species that we're coming across is, 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 is garden ant, black ant. And you know, we all know that generally these are a nuisance species traveling from outdoors. And this is the kind of problem that we associate with them. So you know, we, we have these issues where they're coming inside, foraging for food at certain times of the year and causing a nuisance. Other species can cause more problems from a, a health um, perspective and a, and a, and a well-being perspective. But generally with, with, with the garden ant, it's this foraging nature that, that, that's causing us a bit of a problem. So let's just think about, you know, a lot of the characteristics that are similar with ants, to be perfectly honest, depending on what species we're dealing with and how we can use those best. You know, start to think about these are the characteristics. These are how ants behave. What's the treatment process that can use the make the best use of their characteristics to make sure that everything we do from going forward gives us the best chance of success with control? So, I mean, let's start with, with you know, let's go really back to the start. The Hymenoptera, so four membranous wings, that puts them in the same family as wasps, bees, those kind of those kind. And 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 we know the, the when we work with wasps on a regular basis, if we ever get the chance to look in a wasp nest, that they're highly organised, highly structured. Everything's got a place and a place for everything. And that's no different with a lot of the ant species that you deal with as well. So highly organised, highly social insects. Now, can we use that as a, as a as a treatment tool? Is there some you know? Is there a way that we can use those behaviours, those, those organised behaviours, can we make the best of those? And actually, with the right product, yes, we can. So the, the uh, family of Formicidae, sorry, <laughs> and they are a social insect. So you tend to get lots of them in the same place. Um, they tend to form large colonies, and we'll see some of the European species that are forming really large colonies at the moment and causing some problems for colleagues over, over in Europe. And they're also, um, you know, these large colonies are generally fed by other members of the group. These colonies, every, a place for everything, the ants have got a role. And part of the role of some of these ants is to feed the nest, to take food back to the nest. So this process of food transfer is known as trophallaxis. This is the social sharing of food. This is where ants forage, find, detect, start to feed and start to transfer it back to the nest. And that's important. There's a really interesting aspect of, of, of this social colony behavior here that we can start to make use of with the right products, with the right tools. We just need a good formulation to make benefit of this kind of activity. So again, the social insects, they run within a caste system, so it's very well organized. The queens themselves, they're long lived. They make once, and then they raise their first brood without external food and water. And then, the, the, as a bit like with wasps, really, they've got total control. They control the colony, whether we're talking about species with one ant, uh, with one queen, or whether we're talking with species with multiple queens. Then, you know, we still got this colony that's been controlled by the queens. The males themselves are relatively short-lived. Some don't even feed. The workers are sterile females, and they do the work of the colony. What is that work of the colony? Well, we, you know, the age of the worker determines the task. So what we might see is we might see young workers caring for the queen, for the brood. Middle-aged workers maintain the colony, the site itself. Older workers do the high-risk activities, so foraging for food and protecting the colony. And again, it's this foraging for food, this process, this trophal axis of taking things back to the nest for the good of the colony is something that we as professional pest controllers with the right products can make massive use of. And it really ensures that we have a good level of control and the best chance of control whichever ant species we're dealing with. So ants themselves go through a complete metamorphosis. So there's four stages, egg, larvae, pupa, adult, nuptial flight at the end, which are all, you know, we're all familiar with in the UK when we see these swarms of ants taking off. And generally, that's the end of the colony. You know, we, and that's when the queens disappear, hide and start new colonies in, in you know, in, in the following year. So 
we've got this incomplete metamorphosis, but the thing is that we don't necessarily see it because we don't necessarily get a lot of access to, to ant nests. But they're going through that full. And you, the, this, this movement of food back to the colony, it's all to do to develop this role, to develop this colony, to make sure that this process works as smoothly as it possibly can and to make sure that the ants have the best chance of survival. And again, we can make use of this. It's a, it's a, it's a very beneficial tool that, we, that we've got access to with the various products that are available you know, and the various active ingredients that are available as well. So just as pest species, so some of the, you know, some of the species here that you, if you're based in the UK, you'll recognise some you won't recognise as, as UK pests. Uh, obviously, the black ant and the furrows ant are the ones that we come across most common. Uh, may see a bit of carpenter ant, depending on where you are, Argentine ant. Others, you know, this is reflecting in some ways the, the, the breadth of the label of the Advian products. You know, you've got different species here that feed on different things. Some are sweet, some are say, you know, some are protein, depends on the structure, depends on the species, depends on the time of year. So one thing you do need to bear in mind is that whatever product you're using, you want to make sure that it appeals to those drivers of the of, of the ant species that you're working with. Is it the right product that's got the right amount of everything it needs, be it sweet, protein, whatever, to 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 to, to attract the ants and attract them in the different stages, developments of the nest, because that tends to drive what the ants are looking for at that particular moment in time. The four species that we do tend to see in, in the UK are the furrows ants, the Argentine ants, ghost ant, and black ant. Obviously, black ant is the most common that we all deal with on a pretty regular basis, generally nesting in gardens. Something else that we can bear in mind when we think about the treatment process as well, about the products that we use, it's how do we best make, how do we best sort that out? How do we best get to those hard bridge points? Um, ghost ants, you may see them occasionally every now and again. Again, Argentine ants, something that you might or might not see on a region, on a, on a, on a not, not on that regular basis. And furrows ants, we all know about them and we come across them occasionally. When we come across them, they technically might be more challenging than your your black garden ant treatments, as are the other species that we're looking at here. Doesn't mean that you can't get success with the right product. It just means that you might have to think about a different treatment process with these particular insects. And it might take more time, might take more bait, and it might take more hard work. But it doesn't mean that you can't get control. It just means that you've got to think about your treatment in a slightly different way and really tackle it from a technical inspection point of view before we go ahead and do the treatment process. So how do we treat this? You know, how we, we, we've got, whether it's the foraging ants, whether it's the furrows ants and the health concerns that they bring, and we can chat about those later. But, you know, how do we work with these species? How do we control this? Well, generally, as professional pest controllers, we've, kind of had two real options really so one is baits or gel stations gel gel formulations those kind of things and you know there's benefits with these they're long lasting targeted uh you may not use as much active ingredient and the, key, the real key here is this option for total colony control and we'll go into it in a bit more detail as we go through the presentation but that's really important you know because you know it, with ants, as with a lot of insect species, you know, cockroaches, something like that, you know, we're not necessarily getting to the harborage point or the nesting area, depending on the species, because they're not necessarily in the treatment area. They may be traveling, as we've seen with ants, they may be transferring back food back to the nest. And, and certainly when I was a, you know, a, a servicing pest controller, um, the the actual trails that that the garden ants were were, were making for food into some sort some locations were a great deal you know they were a great distance so you know <clears throat> sometimes it's not even possible to get to the to, to the to the to the nesting site when we're dealing with something like garden ant because it could be two properties away so we need something that is going to control the colony when we can't actually get to the colony and the baits are rather useful for that and we'll have a look at that at why that is in a second. And then the other traditional treatment is is residual treatment. So it's it's using a liquid insecticide in cracks and crevices um, to give us you know long lasting control um, and prevent the movement of ants. And, and 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 you know those are great. We've all done those as, as pest controllers, but there are limitations with that kind of treatment because, as we've already said, the treatment area, the harbourage area, the colony itself, the nesting area 
could be several meters away from the treatment area. It could be more. So you know, we're not necessarily going to get the access. And as 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 you know, as we'll see, we look at registrations and re-registrations. Many products are becoming less accessible for external use. You know that that perimeter spraying, that you know uh, cracking crevice externally. It's not always possible with some of the insecticides as we go forward. So, you know, so we need a good option, but it's not always a residual insecticide in the form of a liquid insecticide. It may be something else, and the baits might just give you the edge when it comes to uh, to to the treatment of these insects. So, as always, the best place to start is the label. You know, so always read the label. You know, it, 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 it's a, it's a sensible place to start, and it's always a good source of information. So. You know, to to understand the target species, and if you look at the avian ant label, one of the things that you'll notice is that the, there's you know, a, a large number of ant species on the label. So that means that the formulation itself is very good for a number of species and a number of species that have different feeding preferences. So you know that's always something to bear in mind when you go through a label: how many insects are on there on, from a bait formulation point of view, and if it's quite varied from an ant species point of view, then is a good mix of everything you need, protein sweets, those kind of things to, to to attract the different ant species at the different times of their development. So it, you know it's always a good start to read the label and understand the what the product allows you to do. Now with general gel applications, there's 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 generally three or four really good reasons for for being able to to use them. Um, one is that gel applications can be incredibly targeted. So what does that mean? It means that you can apply them in a certain location. It means that you can, uh, if you need to, you can retrieve the bait, that kind of thing. Uh, and also, you know, one thing to bear in mind with a lot of the gel products is that they're in and around buildings. So when we think about our species going forward, you know, black ants especially, generally the closer you can get to the, 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 the nesting area with the product, then the best chance of success. So that's always something to bear in mind with, with with whatever gel product you use and can it be used outside? And if it can, how does that improve the 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 the, the application and the treatment of, of the target species? When I say specific, um, they are designed to work against one certain species, which is ants. So, you know, they're not a general insecticide. They're not a broad spectrum insecticide. So that's quite good because, it you know, it means that you put it down and you're only going to attract the target species that you want to work with. Um, I'll go into my view gel in a little bit of detail in a bit. There's another reason why that's specific, but we'll, we'll go into that as we go forward. Efficient, you don't necessarily have to use a great deal. You can put it down as little or as much as needed for the, for, for the control process. Um, generally, two or three blobs, is, you don't need a great deal for depending on the size of the infestation. That might change as we look at different species going forward. But you know, generally, it's a really efficient way. It's a really efficient way of using a relatively low amount of active ingredient to get control of the target species. As I say, it's removable. You know, one of the things that benefits that we do have from gel baits, whichever one you're using, whether they are you know, freely applied from a, a syringe or whether they're in a, a, a bait station, something like that, is that you can take them away at the end if need be. So that's always really useful, you know, so from a contamination point of view, you can put the small dish down, put the bait on top of the dish. So you can always remove it at the end. So that's quite nice. And as I mentioned, you know, when you're working with gel bait to, to, to get colony control, that in and around aspect can be really, really useful. You know, we all know with our identicide treatments that the closer we can take the identicide to the harbourage area for rats, then the more the chance of success. And this gives you a similar principle where, you know, if you can get a little bit closer to where the ants are active, intercept them before they get into the building and get them transferring back, then that's a really beneficial way of controlling them and it gives you the best chance of success. So as I say, targeted application, we can put it where we want, we can be very targeted, we can be very careful with where we put it, and we can also give some thought about where we put it, we can also take it away. You know, we have to meet the characteristics of the insect, but we can also, from a safety profile point of view, a risk assessment point of view, we can be quite, you know, we, we can be quite careful and, and, and manage the, tr the, the, the application very well. And I say, remember that aspect about indoors, outdoors, around buildings, you know, read the label. It may well be that there's a benefit that you get with the gel where you can use it outdoors around the building to get you that little bit closer to a target species. Now, I mentioned that the products are specific. 
So they are, as you've got an ant gel, it's been formulated for ant gel. And, it, you know, so a lot of thought has gone into the formulation, the attractiveness, that kind of thing. When we start to work with a product like Advian Ant Gel um, that has indoxicarb in it, so you only get indoxicarb from Syngenta. And this is, say, this is another level of being specific. So not regarding actual attractiveness of the insect, but the reason that the, the Advian gel with indoxicarb in it is specific is because it has to go through a process called bioactivation. And bioactivation is the process where the, the, the formulation gets into the body of the insect. And it's only when it gets into the body of the insect, it becomes it, it become it, it turns into its active form and becomes an active ingredient. And this because this is because there has to be a molecular change to the actual active ingredient itself. And that molecular change happens when it comes into contact with the enzymes inside the insect's gut. So this is not necessarily specific that it tracks ants, but it's specific as it only works when it gets in the body of an insect. So, you know, when we talk about safety profile, when we talk about risk assessment, cost assessment, then we've got this ability with gels to be quite specific with the target species. But if we use an active ingredient in doxicarb, then we also have this quite specific nature of the product where it will only start to actually become an active ingredient within the body of the target species itself. In this case, it's ants, but if we were talking about cockroaches, it would be Advian gel. Same active ingredient, same process. Now, as well as all the other benefits there, that non-repellent, that innovative mode of action, it's a really interesting aspect of the product. So now, one of the things to remember here is, and, and, and one of the things that I, I feel has, has kind of been overemphasized in the past is that, you know, it means that people, some people say, well, indoxicarm products are really good in sensitive areas. Indoxicarm products are really good in all areas to attract species such as ants. But what you need to remember is it gives you an added level of security because what we don't have as humans and what dogs and cats and other mammals don't have is the right enzymes within their body to turn this product into its active form, to turn endoxicarb into its active form. So there's a, you know, from a risk assessment point of view, a gel bait gives you a level of security and the endoxicarb gives you an additional level of security on that as well. We'll never say it's safe because we're talking about pesticides and we have to be, you know, we have to be suitably, suitably careful in the way that we word our risk assessments. But there's a level of uh, there's a level of security in this that that you get from endoxicarb and that means that you get it from Advian ant gel when you're treating any ant species that you're working with. And here's just a little bit more detail about how this actually works. And as I say, we've got to go through this enzyme stage within the gut of the insect. This is where it removes a little bit of, of, of the chemical. And that's the point where we have an active ingredient. Now, there's another really important aspect to this. Not only does it give us a, a, a level of security, but what it does, it slightly slows down the process. So we have to wait for this to happen in the in, in the insect's body, and this slows down the process of controlling the target species. Now, you might think, well, that's not ideal. But actually, as we've just said, if we want true colony control, what we have to do is via trophallaxis, we have to move the bait back to the colony. And what that slight delay allows us to do is move that bait back in the, the required amount, the required level, the required... Um, a, a, a amount of active ingredients to get true control so you know and so this 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 uh, interesting aspect of indoxicarb this bioactivation helps us in a number of ways in the processes of control so what we this is this is the way that we get efficient colony control uh, you know and, and and this is the way that the, the bait formulations work when we're looking at ant control so you know, we've got the ants that are doing the work. And as you can see from the image there, you know, the green ones are the ones that have picked up the active ingredients and what they're doing, they're transferring it back, they're moving it through the nest. So we 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 term this process as horizontal transfer. It's trophallaxis, basically. So, you know, so what we're doing is, uh, and, and if you've noticed the first slide when I came in about uh, about your new employee, um, and we'll go back to that at the end, but about the marketing, but you'll see that what these products are doing is allowing the target species to do a lot of the hard work. We need to do the survey, we need to do the treatment, but if we do them in the right way, then the target species 
they almost become an employee because they're trans because of the the nature of this product they're transferring it back to the to the target species because what we need what we what we need to do is we need to kill the queen you know we have to remove the queen and that's the way that we eradicate the colony and control the infestation so as i say we call it horizontal transfer and it's this efficient control now it's the same process with with any baits you know you you what you want the bait to do is you want it to be moved back to the harborage point as i say there's some slight aspects of um of 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 the advium products that that make them better at this in some ways uh, and it's always worth bearing in mind that that you know that allows the the level of control that allows so we've mentioned this word trophallaxis it's important it's the thing that we rely on we rely on these ants to do the work for us and transfer the bait back for us on our behalf because we can't always get to the harvest point especially looking at colonies that have got multiple queens such as pharaohs ants those kind of things as well so you know trophallaxis the right bait the right, the, the, the right trailing behaviour by the ants allows us a really good chance of control. We've got the social movement of the food. It's the way that ants communicate as well. It's not just about food. So it, we're taking the insecticide back to the colony. So this is true colony control. You know, when we talk about that in, in the very first slide, when we talk about the, the, the title of the presentation, this is true colony control, and this is the very best way of getting whichever ant species we're dealing with, with, you know, as long as they've got the right product with the right active, this is how we manage the colony. So, and we need slow acting. What we don't want is we don't want insects dying before they get back to the harborage point. You know, so if the amount of active was wrong or the active ingredient wasn't a suitable one, what we would do would start to knock down these worker ants before they got back to the harborage point. And that's not what we want, you know, because, you know, every bite that they take is a control measure when they get it back to the nest. It has to get back to the nest. So we need something that's going to take time. Now, we're not talking weeks and months. But, you know, we're, you know, we're talking across a 24 hour period is, is the kind of time frame that we're talking before we'll see, start to see eradication. Depending on the species, when we look at some of the more complicated species, it might, be taking, might take more time because we've got multiple queens, those kind of things, and also some quite challenging treatment locations as well. So that means that bioactivation, which is what you get in the active ingredients in Advian, is perfect for ant control because it just gives us just enough time to get what we need back to the harborage point, to the to to the to where the where the where the key area is, where the queens are, and that's the nesting site. So, as I say, one thing about the gels, whether you use them in a bait station such as this, or whether you you know whether you place free freely apply them, or whether you put them on some kind of uh, monitoring point, or whether you put in a baiting station, you can take them away. You know, so there's always that benefit at the end of the treatment. You know, they are removable. You can take them away. You can dispose of them. So that's quite handy. You know, you don't, there's nothing left behind if you don't want it to be left behind at the end of the treatment. So just to finish off and just to touch on, so we, you know, we, we've looked at the, the, the way that we move the bait through the colony. We've looked at, you know, the, the importance of trophal axis and we've looked at the, you know, the way that a bait has to work, but it can't work too quick. Because if it works too quick, then what we start to do is we start to undermine our own treatment process by knocking down the, the workers that are doing the work for us. So we you know we need that lag period. But as pest controllers, you know, it, it you know the reason that we enjoy pest control is that it's not always easy and we get difficult treatments that are challenging. And, and you know, I've been in the pest control industry quite a while, and, and, and that's the joy of the pest industry. Um but customers don't always understand that. And sometimes it can be quite challenged for us about are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the wrong thing? So I think the first thing to bear in mind is that, you know, from a, a challenging treatment point of view, there's lots of sources of, of, of information such as the BPCA, your manufacturers. So there's always a, there's always help. There. There's always support there. So one thing, if you're coming across a difficult treatment is don't, you know, don't suffer in silence, get some support. Bear in mind that depending on what species you're working with, they could have a seasonal food preference. So, you know, it, it spring, again, this is, you know, this is species dependent, but, you know, as the colony develops and, you know, lipids, things like that might be what the colony is foraging for. When the population's bigger, it might be carbohydrates, sugars, those kind of things. So, you know, it might not be a huge issue for us as professional pest controllers if we're mostly dealing with black ant. But if we're working with some more complicated and more targeted species, then it might be something that we bear in mind. 
So what we need to do is need to need to make sure that we use a gel that covers all the stations, that covers all the bases, and appeals to all of these species all of the time. And that's down to formulation. That's not active ingredients. Active ingredients are great, but what you need around your active ingredients is a really, really great, well-developed and well-managed formulation it's the formulation that does the you know it's the formulation that does the heavy lifting it's the active ingredient that that, that that in the end that will remove the target species but you have to have a great formulation you know you have to have a good active and what you wrap around that is incredibly important and that's not unique to ant control but when we're dealing with these species that have got nests various nests in a number of locations then you know it's it, it becomes doubly important we have to attract them and if you look at the label of, of Advian gel, there's a lot of ant species on there. So you know, that, that's kind of a signal to you that it appeals to a lot of species that have different feeding preferences. So that's something to bear in mind. Also, depending on the species that we're working with, it can be com uh, incredibly complex. Um, Helia pest control here. So this is on the uh, Syngenta website. So this is a treatment from last year and they were working with furrows ants. And that was an incredible, incredibly challenging uh, project for them that they did a lot of inspection with, they did a lot of treatment with, um, and they, you know, they did a wonderful job. They did it with the support of Killgerm and they did it with the support of us as well. So that goes back to that, that thing about when you've got a challenging treatment, reach out, you know, because we're all here to support and there's a lot of experience within your different distributors, within the trade bodies and within the manufacturers as well. And we actually love to get involved because, you know, we, we have real faith in our products. And what we want you to do is have real faith in our products as well. So reach out. You know, we're always keen to, to, to work with you, especially some of these more technical treatments that will take far more bait. They'll probably take far more time and they'll probably take far more inspection. And you as professional pest controllers need to bear that in mind as well, is that, you know, some of these treatments, when you take them on, and sometimes they might be due to the failure of other organisations or the mistreatment or uh, the poor treatment of people, domestic people who are living on site, is they may take time and it doesn't mean that the product won't work. It's just going to take more time and it's going to take more effort. So reach out. That's what we're here to support with and that's what we always want to do and support with. The other thing to, to bear in mind is it, it not only complex treatments, but also treatments with species that we're not expecting to see. So in preparation for this uh, presentation, I contacted some of my colleagues in Europe just to say, you know, from an ant perspective, what problems are you having? Uh, and it, I, you know, I was interested to see if it was palatability, treatment failure. But in both cases, I've spoken to colleagues in Italy and I've reached out to colleagues in, in Europe, Germany, France as well. Um, in both cases, the, the, the biggest issue wasn't necessarily the product. It was non-invasive, non non-native species and how to manage them and how to deal with them. Um, so if you look at, at, at the case over on the left there in Syracuse in, Italy, in, in Sicily, you know, there's some real issues there with this red fire ant colony that no one knows where they've come from and they're not native but if they get into the rest of europe they could be they're really really damaging species so you know it's how to treat those and you know in, in some cases when we start to come across these species it might be a case that we need to use a different product on a on a on an emergency procedure as is happening in italy with this particular species so uh the thing to bear in mind is that if you're coming across a species and it doesn't quite look right, or if you're coming across a species and it seems to be taking a lot of treatment time and you're not quite getting control, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily doing anything wrong. It might well be that you've come across something new, different, original, so get some support. Um, the, over on the right, the case there is um, this invasive species called Tapinoma magnum. Um, problem in Switzerland, big problems in Germany. Big problems in France, these large colonies that these these insects create. But the image at the bottom is a trial in 2021 with Advian gel directly against this species. So you can see that even with the new species, non-native species, we may have the tools to deal with them and we may have the tools to work with them. But we might not be able to expect the same time frames as we have with with um, you know with, with things like black ant that we see on a really regular basis. So you know. 
if things aren't right, if things don't feel right, if the species are the wrong time of year or the species are, are they, they, they seem to be taking a lot, whatever bait it is, they're taking a lot, but you don't seem to be getting control, um, reach out. You know, because we're seeing more and more of these non-native species, the spoo- the, they're moving quite rapidly through through Europe. I'm, you know, I'm the, the, the certain areas and pockets in in the UK already of some of these non-native invasive species. So when you come across them, you know, we're happy to work with you. We're keen to support you. We're keen to develop any new treatment processes with you. But don't suffer in silence. Whether it's a tricky treatment against something like furrows ants or whether you think that you might have something that you've not come across before uh, and, it, it, and, it, and it feels unusual, then reach out, you know, because we, it, we, it, whatever work we do with you, be it the trade body, the manufacturer, the distributor, it's for the benefit of the industry. We all learn from it. So reach out and get our support. So... Last thing to, to just mention is that, as I say, you saw the the, the, the new marketing um, in my opening slide about the, the pest control with an insect's head. And that goes back to very much the way the process uh, of these products and the way they work. And, and that's that if we've got a really, really palatable gel with a really, really great active ingredient, then you know, with a delayed effect such as you get with, with, with the Advium products, then what that allows us to do, it allows us to it allows us to, to make the insect do the work for us. They do the transfer, be it cockroaches in a different way, but when we're specifically talking about ants, then we get them to do the work for us. We transfer it back to the nest via the via the, 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 the working members of, of the colony. And that's how we that's how we manage and get complete control of the infestation. So we, you know, we 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 want to make our products part of your team, and by making it part of your team, it means that the insects are doing the hard work, hard work for you. So that's the end of the presentation. Uh, if there's any questions, that I'm I'm happy to take them now. Um, but I mean, thank you for listening and really enjoyed that. And if we can, you know, as I say, the one thing that we don't want anybody to do is is, is struggle in silence. If you need support, if you need help, manufacturer, distributor, then reach out because we're we're always incredibly we're always ready to support and help. Great, thank you, Richard. Um, yeah, some like you said, half the work is you know us having the skills and the knowledge that we need, um, and half the work is having having great products available to us and understanding how they how they work and yeah, mm-hmm. the safety the safety aspect, like you mentioned, you know that's always a a concern when we're out there using pesticides. So yeah, that's that's great. Um, we've got one question from Mohammed here. It's just regarding the if you've got a, a high infestation, um, you know, sort of in a garden area, for example, around the location they're coming to the house, is it is it good for large areas? Yeah, I mean, the, the, it, it, as always, it's it's refer to the the label, use the application rate, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm follow up the follow up, you know, adhere to the follow up procedure on the label, seven fourteen mm-hmm. days, that kind of thing. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's. It, it, what you're able to do with the bait formulation is 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 deal with the relatively large infestation with relatively low amount of active ingredient. So, you know, it it doesn't matter how big the infestation is. That the you know the the treatment that referred to in, in one of the slides with the furrows ant treatment, you know, that was a big big treatment, but mm-hmm. it, you know they controlled it successfully with with, with the ambians. Um, it's one of those where it comes down to survey, but generally, you know, bigger ant populations. You, you you treat it accordingly and you get them transferred mm-hmm. back to the nest and you know generally you, you just need to be aware of the application rate and just and just keep within that and mm. you know, 99 times out of 100 you're going to get a really good level of success absolutely like, like you say with the with the label maybe you know we're all guilty sometimes of um you know using products oh, i've used this quite a few times don't need to read the label again but actually it's important that we keep reading that label and keep understanding the application rates because if we don't use it properly we could be wasting product and money of course but also you're not maybe technically going to get rid of a problem so yeah, yeah. And I, I suppose the other thing with labels is that in the background as a manufacturer there's always registrations and re-registrations that you know so so, you know, labels do change, whether whether it's through uh, regulation or whether it's through re-registration, those kind of things. One mm-hmm. thing I can say is that um, the Advians are going through re-registration and we expect them to be on the market for a number of years. So, mm-hmm. you know, no one needs to worry about it disappearing off the market as a tool. 
um, you know, the re-registrations are in process and, we, you know, we are confident that there'll be no issues with that. So we don't expect to lose Advian anytime soon. It's not going right. to be removed to the market. So if you're using it today, you know, hopefully you'll be using it in seven, eight, nine, year time, nine years time as well. You know, th there's no risk in that respect. So we're not expecting any, I, I know, you know, as, as, as a professional pest control industry, we see things disappear all the time and we don't necessarily get the, the amount of things coming back to 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 replace mm. those or to support those, but from mm. a manufacturing point of view, there's an there's there's an amazing amount of work goes into just maintaining the product on the market, you know, before we can bring anything new in. So be assured, this is going to be maintained, this will remain, and this will be a you know a suitable tool for pest controls going forward for a number of years. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Um... Ooh, we've got maybe another minute. We are we are on finish time, but I've just seen a question pop up in the chat section. Just a reminder, if I remember if you've got any questions, put in the Q&A, but I did just see it and I did write it down myself as well as a possible question. But in terms of the um, um, stability of the bait, you mentioned obviously mm -hmm. it's pretty, it, it lasts a fair amount of time. But, you know, if you've got, say, higher temperatures, you're working in a, a bakery, for example, where they're manufacturing it and, and cooking it and whatever, and you're using it, is it, is it quite hardy in environments like that? Well, it does depend on the environment and, you know, um, what you need to do is, is is bear that in mind and build your follow-up visits around it. You know, especially if you're talking about something like fur rolls that are going to take a bit of time, you've always got the possibility of using some of the bait stations, you know, so mm. you can buy them and that will help protect and and, mm. and make the bait long longer lived if you need it to be. Or if it's ant control, you, you, you can get Advian in an outcast station, again, which protects it for a period of time. So, yeah, so you're going to get a number of days into, you know, that the, it's going to remain palatable. If you want mm. to add to that, then one of the things you can do is consider bait stations or consider outcast stations, something like that. It all depends on the location, depends on the it, target species, but it's a, t it's, it, it's a stable product and it's highly palatable. Is there any indication to, um, you know, if you've got the gel bait down, you know, you can do your follow ups and you check the bait. Is there, does it change colour once it's maybe not as palatable or is it, you know, we just got to do a time and think, OK, you know, a couple of weeks in that section. If it's really, really hot, then I've got to assume that maybe I need to replace it. Or I don't know, is there any indication that it's gone? But, well, you know, it's, you know it, it can start to skin that kind of thing. It's, it's difficult okay. when the insects are taking it as well. But, you know, yeah. so you, it, it'll start to, to skin. If you get it in the right place, it won't be there long enough, to be perfectly honest, but because yeah. of the palatability. But, you know, over a period of time, you know, it's, it's you know, and it, the, it, it varies between the, the cockroach and, and the ant, to be honest. The ant does remain need to remain palatable, where if you're looking at the cockroach bait, one that's gone rock hard, it still remains incredibly palatable to to, to cockroaches in the Advium yeah. in, in the Advium family. Not exactly the same with the ants because they tend to like more moist formulations, that that kind of thing. So you have to bear that in mind. So when it does start to dry, then you mm -hmm. you may lose a bit of palatability at that point. But generally, okay. you know, we guard and answer that kind of thing. We get a pretty big, pretty quick pickup. If you're doing something a bit more complicated, then you might want to look at using stations just to improve the longevity. Because you know, they, in a in a bakery, something like that, they're going to get dusty as well. It's not just the it's not just the retention of moisture for the palatability. Yeah. It's also what else is happening in that area from a surface point of view. So it it it's so you know, it might be that you want to use some of the you know just the plastic bait stations that you can get. And just, you know, especially in those dusty environments where it doesn't really matter how moist it stays because it's going to get covered in dust over a short period of time. As, you know, good pest controllers, as you all are out there, assess, do your assessments and then apply. If you have got any issues with it, let us know uh, and we'll look into it and we'll support you with it. Fabulous. Um, just had randomly three questions pop on the text chat yeah. section. We haven't got time to to cover them, but you, if you can go on there and, and type the answers yeah. to the individual. I think we have actually covered maybe a couple of them just in that bit, but okay. that'd be great if you can do that. Thank you, Richard. Okay. No problem. All right. Have, a, have okay. an amazing day and I'll catch you, you later too. on. Speak to you soon. Take Bye. care.